Thanks for tuning in to our starting lineup edition here on Prime Sports Network for the NASCAR Cup Series Roval Edition at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, Sorry we haven't been available the last couple of weeks, but uh, I think you should know by now, since we live in the, we still live in the the Asheville, North Carolina area, just a little bit further west, a little bit further away from the catastrophe. But of course, I hope everybody's, and and I do believe everybody's prayers and good wishes are definitely coming through uh, for the people, including me. But I've had it, I tell you what, I mean, it was rough, but I, a lot more people out there have had it more rough than I have. And uh, the best wishes out there for them as well. And definitely uh, just to continue uh, to fight. And uh, we got to keep giving as much as we can because uh, uh, this is what it's all about. Uh, everybody out there. Uh, you know, we can't get to rely on ourselves, you know, our neighbors, us, you know, our family. Don't rely on the government. I think we know that uh, more than enough. And this is a great example. Let's talk NASCAR, though. Uh, let's talk about this Roval race. And again, it is in Charlotte. So it's a few hours away uh, from uh, a lot of the hardship going on. Uh, we'll see what uh, kind of effects that might have on the race itself. Uh, of course, uh, things like sports. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit of a, of a different turn when it could, no pun intended, when it comes to uh, real life issues. But the Roval is the last road course race of the season for 2024. And uh, we're going, of course, don't forget the link in the description. CJ and I did our first show in the last couple of weeks. We previewed the race that's already available on the channel. So check that out. I'll have a link in the description. It's a detailed account of uh, the history of the drivers on road courses and, of course, the history here at the Roval at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Let's get into uh, the qualifying and practice speeds. We'll take a look at the speed charts for today uh, going into tomorrow's race. And on the poll is going to be... I actually decided to make a little bit of a surprise this time around. I wasn't surprising anybody by putting the face of the driver on the poll on the screen. But here's a little bit of a surprise, right? I guess. Who is it? Well, it's the same guy that you see there in final practice. It's Shane Van Gisbergen. So Shane Van Gisbergen was not only first in final practice, but as you can see here, he ends up first in qualifying. So let's go ahead and start with qualifying. And there you go, Shane Van Gisbergen. There's your top 10. Uh, those are the 10 drivers that uh, battled it out for the poll uh, in the final session of sessions on this Saturday. And Van Gisbergen uh, came in as the favorite. He was the favorite at 4-1. to one. We all know how good Van Gisbergen is on road courses. We get it. But we also talked about, even though this is not surprising that he's on the poll, this is probably expected, uh, that you take a look at a driver that was almost twice, if you take a look at the odds, the second driver, Kyle Larson, odds-wise, was almost getting twice as many points. He's getting seven to one odds. Van Gisbergen, four. Now, I think that that's going to widen. And that's not good news. And but what we did recommend... Again, the other day, that if you're going to go with Van Gisbergen, you should take him before Saturday because of this problem. The same thing that happens, I think the same thing that happened in Chicago, maybe not as much. There's no way he's going to be even money. But the same kind of process regarding the odds and everybody putting money on him is going to happen once the odds pop up. I I, I honestly think you're probably going to get about two to one, maybe 250 to one. And that's about it. That's about all you're going to probably get. I don't think you're going to get much better than that. Now, there's no way I'm taking him at 250 to 1 because I'm not even taking him at 4 to 1. But we all know that he is right now, uh, you know, he's he's, he's sort of still like a a ringer in a way. Yeah, he's racing a handful of races at other tracks and things of that nature. And I get that. But uh, he's, he's still that kind of guy. And maybe one day. We'll look back and say, hey, you know, Shane Van Gisbergen was more than just a road course driver. But at this point, that's really all he is. Yet, um, is that good enough? Yes, he won Chicago. That's a street course race. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. So Van Gisbergen is going to be a heavy favorite. And as fast as he's looked on Saturday and as strong as a favorite as he is, it's just too too, too low of a number for me. And uh, we've given you the reasons why. Okay, now 
Let's talk about Van Gisbergen because of another reason. That is, he's driving a Chevy. And this is real important because Chevy, as we mentioned the other day, has won four out of the six all-time races at Charlotte, at the Roval. And they are off to a great start here. Really great start. And Chevy still has to be the way to go. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you've got AJ running third in qualifying, Larson sixth, Elliott seventh, and Byron tenth. Okay, so you've got the teammates there, the Hendrick teammates, uh, in a good position, by the way. And you know, and not just because they're in the top ten, but statistically speaking, five of the six winners all time started this race in the top ten, but only one started in the top five. That was Chase Elliott starting second back in 2020. No pole sitters ever won this race, okay? So you've only have one of those top 10 drivers that have ever won starting in the top five. And whatever that means, it's just a fact. So I think you need to use that to your advantage when you're looking to handicap this race. And, and I'm going to try to do that uh, because I do like the drivers that are sitting there between sixth and 10th being Larson, Elliott, and Byron. All three of those Hendrick drivers, Chevy drivers, statistically in a good spot. All right, so let's go through the rest of the field for qualifying. And you do have some uh, decent drivers right outside the top 10. Kyle Busch, Christopher Bell, Ryan Blaney. A little bit further down, you got Chastain, Bowman, Hamlin, Gibbs. Carson Hosevar could be the long shot to keep an eye on. Talk about him in a little bit. But other than that, as far as qualifying is concerned, there isn't one driver that I'm actually looking at today. As much as, you know, we, we kind of felt that Bowman would be somebody to keep an eye on. And unfortunately, he's the only Hendrick driver that doesn't look very fast. Even though I probably would still throw a couple of bucks on him because I believe that Bowman is going to end up with good odds now. He was 18 to 1 the other day. He might end up at 30 to 1. And uh, if he's still 18 to 1, I'm not taking him if I decided just to wait for whatever reason. Uh, but if I'm getting 25 to 40 to 1 in Bowman, I'm going to go ahead and stick with him there because, hey, he's got teammates and, and, and he's got the setups to keep an eye on. And we know Bowman is having a really good playoff run so far. But, it's, but other than that, once you get past, I mean, look, I'll consider Bowman at 17. For, I'm not considering Hamlin or forget Gibbs, the Toyotas. Uh, matter of fact, any of the Toyotas except Reddick, I'm not considering. And Hosevar is, is that last driver at 20. And again, I'll get to him in a little bit. And he is driving a Chevy. Uh, okay, so I'll just run through. Here you go. There, there's the rest of the qualifying. But like I said, none of these drivers, none of them. I, 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 would I be interested in just Carson Hosevar at 20? That's it. That, that's where I'm going to draw the line. All right. Now, let's get back to first practice. I've already shown you. Uh, oh, I showed you uh, second practice. Excuse me. So let's go to first practice. All right. There you see AJ. And another Chevy. AJ actually ended up as the, let's see if, I'm, let's see if, I, if I'm, he was the second best driver, accumulative driver, speed wise between practice and qualifying. Because he started third, he's first here, and fifth in second practice. Okay, Van Gisbergen was first twice and sixth once. Okay, and this was the sixth place finish here for Van Gisbergen. So AJ is looking really good as well. And again, driving a Chevy. Um, as far as the other first practice drivers to keep an eye on, look, uh, Sindrick looked really good. I mean, he starts off well in practice with the first practice, closes well with qualifying with fifth, a little bit of a hiccup in second practice, but still looking pretty good. And then you got Elliot and Larson sitting here at seven and eight. And that was pretty much where they ran most of the day in all three sessions. They ran between 6th and 10th, the, th the two of them, okay? And that's okay. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. And then Byron, he starts the day off really well. This was his best session. He starts 4th, ended up 8th in second practice, and then as, you, as we saw, 10th in qualifying. So Byron, who was my top pick the other day, I still like him a lot in this situation, now, when we go down, again, Kyle sits there at 10 and Bell at 12. And there's Blaney at 14 again. Logano drops to 13. Again, I should say drops, but, you know, he starts the day really off at 13. 
And other than that, there's no other driver that is worth talking about here uh, other than Carson Hosevar, who's fifth. But as far as the other drivers down here that we talked about in qualifying, no. I mean, Kozlowski was a top 10 driver, but he didn't do anything in practice. There's Chastain not looking good and Gibbs and Busher and Hamlin. And it's just it's just not good. Not good for any of those drivers. All right. Now, let's wrap it up with the second practice, the old final practice deal. I can't believe we have the old final practices back. All right. So I don't know where this came from with Austin Dillon. But uh, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't look into it. Other than I don't know. He's driving a Chevy. Okay. So, but look at Ryan Blaney. Now this is big for Blaney because this all of a sudden piques my interest because you know Blaney was a heavy dog. It was about 40, 45 to one. We thought that was a great number. Matter of fact, we thought Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano and also Austin Sindrick had great numbers. They were 35, 40, and forty five to one. Uh, it was uh, Sindrick was one of CJ's top picks. Blaney was one of my top picks, and we also mentioned Logano. Now, all three of those drivers, those odds are coming down. So hopefully you were able to take advantage of the odds. The other, I, I believe they're coming down, but you never know. And if they don't come down as much as I think they are, then hey, take advantage of it. But I think that with Blaney here third, Logano fourth, uh, Sindrick, that was his worst, 14th. Nothing wrong with that, considering his top two runs, third and first practice and fifth at qualifying. But the, 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 the Penske team looked really good. Really good. And so I think all three of them still should probably be somewhere between 15 and 25 to 1. That's where I would put them. I don't think you're going to you're gonna have to worry about it going further than that, anything further down than that. If so, you missed, your, you missed a chance. Um, but if you could still get it somewhere around there, and, and look, I was surprised they were 35 to 45 to 1, so maybe you're still going to get a lot better odds than even I'm thinking about here. But those are some long shot drivers to keep an eye on for sure. And as we go down the line, again, there you go. There's Byron Larson, Elliott, Bush. That's pretty much where he's been. 11th. Reddick. Unfortunately, his practice speeds were okay, but just not as good as his second fastest speed in qualifying. Still, without a doubt, the only Toyota driver that I believe you should be keeping an eye on. Uh, Reddick, though, his odds, that's going to be the trick. He was 11 to 1 the other day. Where does he go? Probably goes down to about 8 to 1, maybe even further down than that. Uh, but I would consider him. The only reason that I would not is if his odds were a little low and considering the Toyotas just aren't looking very good. So if he's the only Toyota looking good, I need to have a decent number. 8 to 1, 7 to 1, that might be as low as I'll go. Okay, and then as far as some of these other drivers, that, you know, again, Bowman not showing anything. Bell actually being disappointing uh, after just some average runs in the other two sessions. Hamlin's done nothing. Bush has done nothing. Gibbs, nothing. So it's pretty easy to just draw lines over a bunch of drivers here uh, as uh, we try and determine which way to go. All right, so... Uh, once again, Chevy's the way to go. That's the way I would do it. I'm staying away from Ben Gisbergen because of the obvious odds deal. I'm also going to stay away from Reddick more than likely since he's the only lone Toyota. Unless I get better odds than I think. Unless he's still 10 to 1. If he's 10 to 1, then that's, that interests me for sure. AJ, I think his odds are going to drop too far down from my liking. But AJ is definitely... Uh, see, I would take AJ over Reddick. Um, look, he's defending champ, okay? I mean, age has been really good here. Matter of fact, he led 46 laps in this race last year uh, out of the 109 laps he's ever led, ever in his career in road course racing. So th this is his best track, road course track. So AJ is definitely in the running, but if he's five to one, something like that or lower, I'm not interested. The other day, that was the time to be interested in AJ at 8-1. to one. If you still can get maybe 7 or 6, maybe, I, I'd, I'd have to think about it. But I, I don't know. It's it's I, I still like them better at 8-1 to one the other day. All right. Um, other than that, you just have to make the decision what you do want to do with those Hendrick drivers. Um, we broke down their history. You can check that out on the other show that we did. But look, Larson, yes, he's got a win here a few years ago. But keep in mind, he's not... 
like dominated or did anything here at this specific road course track that makes me think that he should be any lower than where he was the other day, which was seven to one. So I'm not taking him, but uh, that's because I'd rather take Elliot or Byron. Byron was eight to one and Elliot was a surprising 12 to one. But I still think uh, Byron's the way to go. I still feel very confident about that. I think the, the, the reason I would take Elliott over Larson are the odds. I would definitely do that. If they're equal or pretty equal, then I'm going to Larson. But if I'm getting five-point difference like you were the other day, I'm still sticking with Elliott over Larson. I just don't think there's a big difference between the two. And again, as far as long shots or other drivers to consider, look, Kyle Busch, he's a Chevy driver. And he's, yeah, he hasn't looked like explosively fast, but he's just hanging around. And the odds look pretty decent still. I don't think they're going to change much at 16 to 1. So I think Kyle Busch is definitely a driver to consider since he's driving a Chevy. And then Carson Hosevar. Let's close on Hosevar. Let's remember this. He was third at Watkins Glen. Okay? He started 29th in that race. That was his best finish, road course finish, cup finish. He doesn't have a lot of experience in the NASCAR series on road course, on road course races. Fifth and sixth in practice, uh, you know, not so fast in qualifying. But I'm not worried about the qualifying number of 20. If he could stay out of trouble, he is definitely one of the better fantasy plays, I'll tell you that much. So I would definitely look at a host of R in a fantasy sense. You're going to get a good number on host of R odds-wise. I still got to believe you're going to you're gonna get a solid number. Anything around, you know, 30 to 50 to 1 or more on host of R, uh, I would definitely put a buck on for sure. Um, but that's the way we're going to go. We're looking at the Chevys, four of the top seven in qualifying, including the pole sitter Van Gisbergen. Chevy, the only manufacturer in practice with top tens in both sessions. Five of those drivers did it. Uh, Ford, the Penske's, Logano, Blaney, Sindrick. Those are three long shots to look at. Reddick's the only Toyota to consider. But again, since he's driving a Toyota, I think we're going to pass on him unless we get a better number than we're expected. And that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please let us know what's on your mind, comments, uh, suggestions, questions, anything regarding the race or NASCAR in general. Let us know here on Prime Sports Network. And yes, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. We'll be back again with another show Barring any weather catastrophes, we should be back and ready to go once again early in the week on Tuesday with CJ Redoon from Rotowire. Also, check the description out because you're going to find the link to check out CJ's fantasy report from rotowire.com for the race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. So we'll see you again real soon. I'm Greg DePama. Have a great Sunday and best of luck.